Chapter 3. What's the best strategy for funding education? The 529 Plan in the United States and Registered Education Savings Plans, RESP, in Canada, are promoted as savings plans for post-secondary education. While in both cases there are some benefits, we are going to examine these plans and consider whether there is a better way to save for your children's future. Let's start with the 529 plans. There are two types of 529 plans. The first is to prepay tuition at a qualified educational institution at current tuition rates, and the second to invest money in a tax-deferred account that will later be used to pay for education at future tuition rates. While you can earn interest on your investment in either case, there are some obvious restrictions with option one, so we will focus on the second option. The tax-deferred 529 account keeps you as the owner of the account and your child as the beneficiary. Even though it is classified as state-sponsored, you will deal with the investment company where you set up the account, and your money inside the 529 plan is subject to market volatility, and therefore, risk. There are no guarantees. When your child starts their post-secondary education, as long as all the money in the 529 plan is used for qualified education expenses, it is exempt from federal taxes. Examples of qualified education expenses are tuition, room and board, fees, books, and even computers. If your child decides not to study, you can roll the funds into another qualified investment product, but fees may be charged. You can withdraw the money if needed for non-education purposes, but all the growth and earnings are taxed at the parent's current tax rates, plus a 10% penalty. The RESP in Canada is similar in structure. However, government grants are available. The government will match 20% of contributions up to $500 per year to a lifetime limit of $7,200. To maximize the grant money you receive, you'll need to contribute a minimum of $2,500 per year over the course of 14 years, and then $1,000 in the last year to hit that $7,200 grant ceiling. With these minimum contributions, you would have contributed $36,000 over 15 years. The lifetime contribution limit for an RESP is $50,000 per child. If you withdraw the money for non-education purposes, all the grant money <coughs> would have to be returned and any growth in the account would be taxed as income to the parents with an additional 20% penalty.